Welcome everyone to our explorations of biotechnology. Today, we will embark on a fascinating journey into the world of biology and technology, coming together to solve real world problems and improve our life. From genetically modified organism to cutting edge medical treatments, biotechnology offers endless possibility. Let's dive in and discover the amazing ways in which science is shaping our future. Biotechnology involves using living things to create new products or using technology to improve existing one. First, let's look into the extraction metals from ores. Biotechnology helps in extracting metals from ore by using microorganisms to break down the ore and extract the metals they contain. This process called bioreaching is more environmentally friendly and cost effective compared to traditional methods. In terms of the culture microorganism industry, first, microorganisms are selected based on the ability to produce desired substances. Then, they are grown in a controlled environment called fermenters. Nutrients such as sugar and minerals are provided to support their growth. The conditions like temperature and pH are also controlled to optimize the productions. Second, we have a batch culture. In a batch culture, microorganisms are grown in a closed system with a fixed amount of nutrients. Once the nutrients are depleted or waste product accumulate, the culture is harvested and a new batch is started. And then for the continuous culture, fresh nutrients are continuously added and the culture is naturally harvested which allow for a stable production of desired substances without interruption. And in terms of the productions, we have three types of production. Productions of protease, productions of penicillin, productions of biomass. Productions of protease. Protease are enzymes that break down proteins. They are produced using microorganisms like bacteria, fungi, in a large-scale fermenters. The microorganisms are provided with nutrients and their growth is optimized to maximize protease production. And the protease are then extracted and purified for various industrial applications such as detergent and food processing. Then we have productions of biomass. Biomass refer to organic matter such as plants or microorganisms that can be converted into biofuel or other useful products. Microorganisms like algae or bacteria are cultured in fermenters and provide with nutrients to produce biomass. And these biomass can then be harvested and processed into biofuels or used as a feed stock for other industrial processes. And for productions of penicillin, as general, Penicillin is an antibiotic produced by the fungi penicillin. And in the production process, penicillin is grown in fermenters under control conditions. And nutrients like sugars and minerals are provided to support its growth. And the culture is monitored to optimize penicillin production. And when the penicillin concentration reaches a peak, the culture is harvested and the penicillin is extracted and provided for medical use. Let's look into the concept of immobilized enzymes. Immobilized enzymes refer to the enzyme that are attached or trapped onto a solid surface or within a matrix, which allow them to remain in a fixed position. And this setup makes them more stable and reusable, enabling easier handling in the industrial processes like food production or waste treatment. Essentially, it is like anchoring enzyme in a place to enhance their performance and longer return. Then let's look into the immobilized enzyme in algae. 
Immobilizing an enzyme in alginate means that trapping the enzyme in gel-like substance called alginate, which help keep the enzyme in place and make it more stable for various applications like food processing or wastewater treatment. And the process of immobilizing enzyme in alginate typically involves three steps. One is preparation of alginate solution. Number two is enzyme mixing. And number three is immobilization solidifications and also washing and storage and in terms of the preparing of alginate solution it dissolves alginate powder in a suitable solvent to create a gel-like solution and during the enzyme mixing they're going to mix the enzyme solutions with the alginate solution to evenly distribute the enzyme within the alginate matrix and in the stage of immobilization Immobilization, they will dispense the mixture drop by drop into a solution containing calcium iron, and the calcium iron causes the alginate to cross link, forming gel beads or capsules that trap the enzyme inside. In the process of solidification, it allows the gel beads or capsules to solidify, typically by leaving them in a calcium solution for a set period. And then they were going to re rinse the immobilized enzyme bed or capsules to remove excess alginate and any unbound enzyme. And finally, they come to the stage of storage where they store the immobilized enzyme in a suitable buffer or sodium solution and ready for use in various applications. And let's look into what the, the advantages for using immobilized enzyme. First, we have a reusability in terms of its mobilized enzyme can be used repeatedly, reduce the need for frequent enzyme placement and lowering cost. And then we have enhanced stability. Mobilization help enzyme withstand harsher conditions such as high temperature or extreme pH level, which making them more durable and durable for industrial processes. And then we can also have the advantages using mobilized enzyme in terms of improved control, which allow for better control over the action rates in product formation, leading to more consistent and efficient processes. Then on top of that, the advantages of using mobilized enzyme is easy separation. Mobilized enzyme can be easily separated from the reaction mixture, simply in stream processing and product qualification. And finally, we have in terms of the compatibility. Mobilized enzyme can be used in various environments, including compost and organic solvent, expanding their applicability to different industries and processes. Let's look into what are the dipsticks used. It's used for measuring glucose concentration. Glucose dipstick work by utilizing enzymes such as glucose oxidase and peroxidase which are immobilized, fixed in place on the surface of the stick. When you dip the stick into a sample containing glucose, like blood or urine, the glucose interacts with the enzyme glucose oxidase. And the glucose oxidase catalyzes a reaction that converts glucose into gluconic acid and hydrogen peroxide. The hydrogen peroxide produces then react with another enzyme peroxide peroxidase and a Homogen, in this case potassium iodide, which causes a color change on the dipstick. The intensity of the color change corresponds to the amount of glucose present in a sample, and a darker color indicates a higher concentration of glucose, while a lighter color indicates a lower concentration by comparing the color change to a reference chart provided by the manufacturer. We can estimate the glucose concentration in the sample. So, the enzyme on the dipstick help to break down the glucose in the sample, which lead to a chemical reaction that produces the color change, which allow you to measure the glucose concentration. This method is commonly used by people with diabetes to monitor the blood glucose level at home. And these are the biosensors for measuring glucose. One, we have a, just imagine a tiny device like a mini robot that can tell you how much sugar glucose is in your blood. And second, 
This device, called a biosensor, uses a special enzyme called glucose oxidase. And third, this enzyme is like a key that can recognize glucose molecules. When glucose comes into contact with this enzyme, it causes a reaction that produces a signal, kind of like turning on the light bulb. And four, the scientists attach glucose oxidase to a surface inside the biosensor, which keep it in place so that it can detect glucose effectively. And finally, when someone wants to measure their glucose level, they just put a drop of blood on the biosensor. And if there is a glucose present, the biosensor will be reading. And it is like having a small little helper keeping track on the sugar level for you. Next, we have monoclon monoclonal antibi antibodies. Antibodies are protein produced by the immune system, which help to fight off infection and diseases. And they recognize and bind to specific foreign substances, which call antigens, to neutralize them and help eliminate them from the body. Monoclonal antibodies are antibodies that are made by identical human cells that are all cloned of a unique parent cell. They are designed to bind to specific target, such as protein, on the surface of cancer cells or viruses with precision. Monoclonal antibodies are produced by first immunizing a mouse with a target antigen, then B cells from the mouse spleen that produce antibodies against the antigen are connected and fused with myeloma cells to create hybridoma cells. And these hybridoma cells can produce indefinitely and produce identical antibodies in large quantities. Monoclonal antibodies have various uses, including targeted cancer therapy, where they can deliver toxic substances directly to cancer cells, while sparing healthy cells. And they are also used in diagnostic to detect specific protein or marker in blood samples. And in immunotherapy to treat autoimmune diseases and prevent organ reaction after transplantation. The uses of monoclonal anti antibodies. Diagnosis, monoclonal antibodies can be used in diagnosis by specifically targeting certain molecules that are associated with the disease. In pregnancy testing, monoclonal antibodies can detect the presence of a hormone called HCG, which indicates pregnancy. In ELISA tests for infection diseases, monoclonal antibodies are used to detect protein or antigens unique to the disease causing agent. These antibodies are attached to a surface and capture the target molecule from a sample, from a patient sample. If the target molecule is present, it binds to the antibody, and this binding is detected through a color change or fluorescence, which is indicate the presence of a disease. And finally, this process allows for rapid and accurate diagnosis, often yielding results within minutes or an hour. Pregnancy testing. In pregnancy tests, urine from a pregnant woman contains a hormone called cryonic gonadotropin or HCG. The test strip has three bands. One is R band, T band, and C band. The R band is this band contain antibodies that stick to HCG, and this antibody has enzyme which is attached to them. T band more antibody that stick to HCG are in this band along with a color substance for the enzyme in the R band. And the C band is this band ensure, ensure the test is working properly. When the test strip is dipped in urine, it moves out by capillary reaction. If HCG is present, it binds to the antibody in the R band. And this HCG antibody complexes along with the enzyme which is break free and move up the street with the urine. When they reach the T band, the enzyme causes the colored substance to react, creating a color line on the street, which is indicate a positive result. In terms of the treating disease, monoclonal antibodies are created to attach to specific protein on the surface of certain cells in the body. For example, rituximab targets a protein called CD20, which is found only on the B lymphocytes. And this is a full in treating non Hodgkin lymphoma, where B cells multiply uncontrollably. 
when glutazimate binds to these B cells, it flags them for destruction by the immune system. And new healthy B cells are produced in the bone marrow to replace them, which is can reduce the cancerous cells. That's all for today's presentations. And please don't forget to subscribe to Jones Study Line YouTube channel. Thank you very much for your cooperation and hope, hope that you are successful in your study. Thank you very much.